feedback from the last videos and running my code, I realized I have to do some uh, optimization, uh, really some heap optimization. It looked like things were getting fragmented in the heap. And again, because this is a microcontroller, uh, memory is scarce. So some of the resources I used to get this, this started was, uh, first this is the main one, is under MicroPython website, uh, docsmicropython.org. This is a good read. It's the latest information on uh, things and approaches that can be used to optimize the heap, uh, make sure you're using it, it well. So uh, I'd say that's the starting point. I looked at this video here. Um, it's from PyCon in Australia from Damon George, uh, who's one of the writers of uh, MicroPython. A lot of good uh, hands-on information about uh, what should be done for uh, optimizing the heap as well as writing faster code. But I was, for my particular problems, I was trying to focus on reducing the amount of heap that was used. And another um, resource that I found useful is sort of gave me an idea of what to do, what to attack first was uh, these five tips on heap optimization for MicroPython. Um, so the main things to look at were, uh, you know, how to monitor the heap so you know wh what your problems are. Um, the tip to compile modules, I'm going to try doing that. Um, and uh, doing things like making sure you're managing the garbage collection uh, throughout the life uh, lifetime of your program. Okay, I'm looking to fix up uh, the memory errors. So I uh, put back the, the normal ping routine uh, and ran uh, main again. And we get the same errors I saw in the 8B video. Uh, so it goes through, it does the MQTT part. It's starting the next round of bings. And you see it throws out this this error here, line 28 of get random string in the in the ping routine. So let's have a look at the ping routine. Actually, I got it there. And line 28 is get random string. You see in here it's doing a return of the uh, uh, joined together random choice of characters from this printable characters string. And it's saying it needs to allocate 8,000 bytes for that, which is a really large chunk of memory and uh, is probably not going to work the best of times. Um, I'm going to have to dig in to see uh, why this requires so much uh, memory allocated. Um, but one, one, uh, one clue is I, I put this routine in. I wrote that routine. So I might go back to the original for now. Uh, so instead of doing a random string for the ping, I'll just do a, a string of uh, bytes, uh, which will be smaller, of Q uh, for whatever the size is. And let's run that again and see uh, whether we still get the heap errors. OK, I'm going to try running with my updated uPing routine. So I've uh, changed from using a random string to a set string. Uh, also up in the the main pie, I've uh, got the loop going a lot more time so I can see uh, if it still has heat problems. I've also put a print statement in to uh, print out which loop I'm in uh, every time I loop through. Uh, let's upload that. The, when I upload it also clears the memory and let's run main pie. Okay, so we're looping through and we got a Another error. So this time, again, it's in the ping routine. Uh, it's a memory allocation fail trying to get 4,000 bytes. Uh, and that was in, uh, let's see which loop we're in. Five. Looks like loop five. So we got five times through our loop. Uh, this time still not enough. So let's go have a look in new ping again. And it's line 95. And here we see where the socket's been set up. It's uh, uh, allocating uh, the response uh, buffer of 4,096 bytes. Now, I know my pings aren't going to be uh, greater than uh, about 1,600 bytes, so that seems too big for the, the buffer I'd want. So let me uh, I'll comment out that, which was the original size. 
I'm going to reduce the size by half to 2048 bytes and see what difference that makes in, when I run it this time. Uh, so let's save everything, go back to main pi, uh, upload again. Same story, reboot, so I uh, start with a cleared out heap and let's run main pi again and see how many loops we make through before we have any problems. So we're more successful this time, made it 99 times through the loop and uh, still got a failure, didn't get a uh, an actual uh, memory allocation error this time. Uh, and got the error in the NTP time libraries. I have to have a look at that. Uh, also, um, I'm going to use some of the the utilities that are available to look at how the heap's been used, how the memory's been used, to uh, see if I've still got problems with heap allocation. So I'll be doing that in a sec as well. So I want to see what's happening with the stack. So one of the utilities or one of the com commands that are useful is this GC mem free mem alloc command. Uh, earlier on I showed you the resources, so in the main MicroPython site there's documentation on reporting, describes some of the things you can do. The other one I may use is this meminfo, but at the moment I'm going to use free and alloc to just see generally how much uh, memory is available as uh, the application runs. So I actually ran the application, ran it made it 273 times before I got sick of running it. Um, I changed main pi a little bit so uh, in the main loop now it's printing the iteration as well as the memory based on this uh, uMemory free library I just showed and basically that's getting the garbage collection memory free memory allocated and returning it as a percentage. Uh, when I ran ran that, you can see the results here. Uh, so I get six stars, iteration number, and percentage of memory free uh, as it runs through each iteration. You see it bouncing around. So I'm interested in seeing if there's any sort of pattern with uh, uh, the memory. The other thing to think about with the garbage collection is for MicroPython, if you don't do any explicit garbage collection, uh, basically it'll do, only do garbage collection when it tries to do an allocation. Uh, it fails. At that point, it'll, it'll do a garbage collection. So at the moment, it's kind of random when it hits that state and when the memory gets returned. Okay, so I, I copied all the results of the run, uh, actually put it over here into the uh, Notepad++. I'm going to use the search mark. I'm going to mark anything that has six stars in it. I'll select mark all, so you see I'm selecting those those lines. Uh, I'm going to use the option of bookmarking the line. So again, all those lines are now bookmarked. Now I can go to actually I think it's search bookmark and removed unbookmarked lines. So now I just get a simple list of the iteration number and the the percentage of memory uh, control. A. I'm going to copy all those, bring up Excel, make a blank worksheet. I'm going to paste all those lines in. Control V, text to columns. Okay, so text to columns, and uh, I'm going to use a delimiter of the colon. Okay, it all looks good. So column B is the one I'm interested in. So let's see what that looks like when I. display it as a chart. So there's our chart. Um, so I was really hoping that there's some sort of trend on the maximum available heat memory, minimum available heat memory, and like if I ran a 
line across these minimum numbers or ran a line across these maximums that I'd see some sort of increase or decrease over time but it's really just holding between those two ranges and uh, it's probably just when randomly a garbage collection occurs uh, when the memory increases and when it decreases. Again this is just telling me the overall availability of memory not the amount of fragmentation over the time um, but it's some good information. So something I'm going to try is uh, put in a, a manual garbage collection. So I'd kind of like over in my ping routine every time it does a ping before it starts the ping is just put in let me see and do a GC collect before any ping um, so at least uh, for each ping it's probably using the maximum amount of available memory it doesn't have to go into a garbage collection during the ping maybe uh, this may give me more consistent ping times too that maybe that's there's some some of the inconsistency I saw in ping times in the past is random garbage collections happening during the, the the ping routine so we'll see if this helps so I changed things around a little bit um, so where I was uh, doing a set time in a JW and a creating a Java web token every time uh, I only need to do that once the Java web token uh, reaches its ex expiry time uh, so I've put that in a condition here if and I've set up a JWT time which is uh, the the time that it was at last calculated a Java web token starts off at, I just force it to zero um, so if it comes through here first time through JWT time will be zero so it'll execute the logic uh, to uh, set the time again get the network time and set up a uh, set the JWT time so it's no longer zero and then does create the Java web token uh, the other condition that can cause it to come in here is where the actual Java web token has expired um, so we add the JWT time so that's the last time the Java web token was calculated add the number of seconds uh, from our config about the token uh, time to live and then subtract the current time and if it's less than zero then it means the the Java web token is expired as well so we need to go through here and recalculate the Java web token uh, so the advantage of this is this was taking about 25 seconds every time to occur in the in the loop so that's probably taking quite a bit of, of uh, processor and uh, messing around with the heap so I ran that and I actually got through all 1000 uh, loops in the iteration which is a good sign uh, you can see the results here um, so I did the same things last time I, I wanted to see what the the trends and memory usage was so I pulled off the the console log here I had any uh, kept track of the last 200 iterations but that's probably good enough same thing I copied that over to uh, notebook uh, bookmark the lines that had the six asterisks in it uh, copied that over to Excel separated off the percentage column gra charted that uh, I also changed the, the lower bound to be 40% upper bound to be about 46% uh, the one thing you notice is there's not so much bouncing, ar bouncing around of the garbage collection uh, that's probably because uh, I changed the ping so it does a garbage collection before every ping so not happening so randomly every ping basically refreshes uh, uh, what's available in the in the heap um, the other thing I did is just put a linear trend line on here just because I was, I was interested in seeing whether the heap was still decreasing in size uh, the interesting thing is at least for the eight, last 200 uh, iterations of the thousand the, this indicates the heap was slightly increasing in size I don't know how much you can read into that but it's uh, better than decreasing in size um, 
And just a note, so something like a thousand iterations is where every iteration would normally uh, have a governance value of five minutes. There's something like four or five days of uh, data collection, um, and we're not seeing any any heat problems. Uh, so this is looking quite good. This might be as far as I go with the optimization. The other thing I was thinking of doing, I may still still do, is all these libraries here, the the dot pi libraries. Um, they have to get compiled when they get imported on the ESP32, the way they're set up at the moment. However, I can pre-compile them to byte uh, bytecode on um, on the ESP32 uh, using a utility that runs on the PC. Uh. Okay, mostly finished now. So I did change things around a little bit more just to... Uh, Make it a little bit more optimized, so it's something I'm going to do rather than uh, wait till the web token expiry time and then create a new one. Uh, that's probably a good time to actually reboot the device. Um, so as it's set up at the moment, I've got an expiry time of 12 hours. So every 12 hours, the device will reboot. So that's probably a nice way of uh, clearing everything out for sure. Um, so to do that, I've changed main underscore pi to main pi, so I can test this out. Uh, doing all the connect, getting the t network time, um, uh, getting set an expiry date based on current time, uh, plus the the from the configuration file the web token time to live. Uh, getting the web token and then staying in the while loop now rather than while true uh, as now while the web ex Java web token expiry is greater than the current time um, and it's just going to run through and and loop like it did before until it uh, hits the Java web token expiry so that should normally be 12 hours does the disconnect from the network and then it's going to call machine reset which does a uh, a low level reboot of the ESP32 and because this is called uh, main.py after the reboot it's going to do uh, boot pi and then it's going to do main pi by d default and run again so I actually ran that so basically the way you run it now it's called uh, main pi is just to do a uh, an upload so I uploaded the the changes. So my config pi I set to uh, one minute expiry while I was testing this. Uh, changed main underscore pi to main pi. Uh, so it did all the upload, did the reset on the board as it normally does with an upload, uh, and then it drops into the code. So it's doing the connection to the to the Wi-Fi, uh, doing however many loops through that it can fit into one minute and again this is in test mode so I haven't got the the full sleep time being being performed uh, but once it reached the end of the the sleep time when rebooted again cleared everything out re-established the Wi-Fi connection started running again until I uh, manually broke it with a control C so this is looking good this is probably the end of uh, the immediate work I'm doing on ESP32 and MicroPython uh, should be working well enough that I can change the configuration for a, a probe, let it run, and uh, all the all the data is getting pushed up to the uh, cloud IoT. So I'm going to swap over to Angular mode now and do some web development. So what I want to do is have a web client that manages this whole thing for for whatever probes I want to run and what devices I'm managing. Uh, have it all managed from an Angular client to make it a lot easier to to manage this and have you know, a bunch of different probes out there or different devices out there either running um, standard definition for probes so you might have different devices in different locations being uh, the, the, the same endpoint uh, just to see what uh, network capabilities are uh, from different locations um, so all that stuff will be managed up in the Angular client just because it'll It'll look nicer and give you a central way of managing all the probes, which is the uh, reason behind putting together the Sour Probes application. We'll see how we go. So uh, next uh, videos will be quite a few. I may not get into the details of Angular, but uh, anything interesting like things I haven't done before, like uh, 
displaying charts and graphs, uh, data, data visualization, those sort of things. Now I'll probably put a video up there on on that. Uh, once all of that's working, I'll probably then come back to to the MicroPython code. I want to put some try catches in here just to make it a little bit more reliable. Once I'm confident things aren't going to break too often, and uh, uh, also put some other network capabilities in there. So it's like just doing a a straight ping rather than a bing all the time. Also, I think I want to check on uh, that, like a web server's up or down. Uh, being able to do a check on that, probably get the response times or time to the first uh, byte sort of uh, statistics of web service as well. So uh, add some more capabilities like that. But that'll be after I get the the Angular client client working. I think.